Sanchi, ancient town in Bhopal, and recently provided a venerable backdrop for the jubilee celebrations of the Mahabodhi Society. Coinciding with the celebrations was the enshrinement of the relics of Sariputta and Mahamogalana, two of the Buddha's most devout and eminent disciples. A special train carrying the sacred relics arrived at Sanchi on the morning of 29th November from Calcutta. Dr. Sharma Prasad Mukherjee was one of the honored custodians of the relics. Another august visitor was Dr. Radha Krishnan, India's Vice President. Buddhist pilgrims from many parts of the world, including head lamas of Ladakh, were on hand to pay homage to the mortal remains of the renowned disciples. An ovation from some 20,000 people greeted Mr. Nehru and Burma's Prime Minister, Mr. Tarkin Nu, as they arrived by jeep. They were given a warm welcome on this historic site. The golden casket containing the relics was placed in a decorative pandal for public veneration. 38 sutras were chanted in fervent faith led by Buddhist monks gathered here more than 3,000 strong. And countless prayers were offered by devotees of the Enlightened One, prayers for peace in a strife-torn world. Later, a huge procession left the Pandal for the permanent enshrinement of these sacred relics in a new Vihar, completed only this year. Mr. Thakin Nu praised India for her keen interest in reviving Buddhism. Mr. Nehru, addressing the vast audience with due solemnity, said that the message that the Buddha gave 2,500 years ago was a great light not only for India, but for the whole world. Future historians will remember the events of the 29th and 30th November, for Sanchi regained the relics that were part of its ancient glory. And people of many nations reaffirmed their faith in the noble teachings of Lord Buddha and his two beloved disciples, Sariputta and Mahamogalana. Goa Portuguese territory on the western coast of India has donned festive attire to welcome pilgrims from all parts of the world. They have come to pay homage to St. Francis Xavier, great apostle of the Indies. Priests and pilgrims were present in their thousands before the massive church of Bom Jesus to honor the apostle saint. His mortal remains were to be transferred with befitting ceremony to the Say Cathedral for exposition. The papal legate, Cardinal Serehaira of Portugal, arrived to officiate at the sacred rites. An inspiring statue of St. Francis Xavier, holding his famous crucifix, adorns the impressive interior. This richly decorated silver sarcophagus held the body of the Apostle Saint, who died four centuries ago. At sunrise on 4th December, bells of the cathedral and the churches pealed in unison, summoning the clergy and the faithful. Vast crowds composed of pilgrims from many nations line the route of a procession headed by the cardinal. The damask-covered coffin of the saint was carried on the shoulders of six archbishops from the Basilica of Bom Jesus to the cathedral. The memorable procession wended its way in solemn silence along the quarter-mile route. The multitude strained to catch a glimpse of the incorrupt remains of the Apostle of the East, hoping thus to receive benediction. 50,000 patient and faithful onlookers crammed the cathedral square to witness the historic event. With simple dignity, the prelates advanced towards the dais on which they lowered the coffin. The Archbishop of Goa unlocked and opened the lid. Another prelate withdrew the white cloth, disclosing the revered body. With the lid removed, the open coffin was taken and deposited in the silver sarcophagus. And then took place the most imposing event of all, the pontifical mass, with Cardinal Serahira occupying the episcopal throne. After the high mass, the lower end of the glass coffin was opened and the body was withdrawn a few inches so that pilgrims could kiss the foot of the saint. 
It is said that the body has shown signs of contraction and the skin of rupture. After this, the final exposition is over. The mortal remains of St. Francis Xavier will be permanently enshrined, hidden from public view for all time. No wonder then the faithful have flocked here in their thousands to pay devotional respect to this beloved disciple of God, St. Francis, great apostle of the Indies. Prime Minister paid a special visit to Bombay on 5th December to attend the Silver Jubilee of the training ship Dufferin. Mr. Nehru was received by its Captain Superintendent, Captain Harvey, and then inspected a Guard of Honour. The distinguished visitor felt at home aboard the Dufferin, cradle of Indian seafarers. He presented the ship with a miniature in silk of the new ensign. After a tour of the ship, which was wearing her best bib and tucker, the Prime Minister went ashore alongside. Senior Cadet Captain H.J. Martins, who had been selected as the year's best cadet, received the President's gold medal from the Prime Minister. The runner-up, Senior Cadet Captain Peter Silver, received the governing body's prize. Mr. Nehru unveiled the shield which he had presented to the ship in commemoration of his visit. In a tribute to the cadets, the Prime Minister said that he was always interested in the youth of the country on whose shoulders rests the future of India. On the 6th December evening, a large crowd, estimated over 100,000 strong, gathered on Chalpati Sea Face to welcome the Prime Minister. The ovation that greeted his arrival thundered across sand and water. This public appearance on the second day of his Bombay visit rounded off a crowded program. Addressing the multitude, Mr. Nehru said, if the Korean tangle was not resolved, it would result in another global war. He added that India's policy of neutrality would be continued without fear or favor of any bloc. Regarding India's five-year plan, he announced that he would sign it on his return to Delhi. Muslims in Bombay as elsewhere celebrated Eid -e Milad, the birthday anniversary of the Prophet Muhammad, with great enthusiasm. Thousands of people formed processions which went along the streets. There were tableaus suggestive of some typical features of each Islamic country. The day was spent in general rejoicing. The teachings of the Prophet were recalled at congregational prayers and public meetings. Rashtrapati Bhavan, New Delhi, the President took the salute at a special parade held in honor of his birthday. Dr. Rajendra Prasad was 68 on the 3rd December. Greetings and good wishes were received from all parts of the world. Dr. Radha Krishnan also wished him many happy returns. Children offered garlands of flowers to Dr. Rajendra Prasad. He thanked them for these tokens of affection and wished them in turn a bright future. Calcutta's East Bengal club met Hyderabad police in the final of the Durand Cup football tournament in Delhi. What Bengal lacked in teamwork was partially made up by some clever dribbling by individual forwards. The Hyderabad side, however, were in better form but they were unable to press home their advantage. East Bengal scored a goal three minutes before half time. East Bengal retained the coveted trophy for the second year in succession. Mr. Krishna Menon, deputy leader of the Indian delegation, introduced in the political committee of the United Nations General Assembly a resolution containing India's plan to solve the Korean issue. The 17-point plan relates itself primarily to repatriation of prisoners of war on both sides and also suggests the establishment of a repatriation commission consisting of representatives of four neutral states for the purpose. The General Assembly finally adopted the Indian resolution with an amendment moved by Mr. Menon the amendment makes it clear that the object of the Indian proposals is to effect an immediate ceasefire in Korea. 
The voting was 53 in favour of India's resolution and five against. Silver Springs, Florida holds a bathing beauty contest that is all wet, for the contest is underwater. Down here, beauty is more than skin deep, for it's a fathom below the surface. The judges who see a sea view of the proceedings say this are looking lovelier than ever. The winner is Ginger Stanley of Ocala, Florida, who's duly crowned Miss Submarine of 1952, the pin-up girl from Down Under. Thank you.